low pressure zone the system most detailed and most susceptible to leaks starting from the flow meters to vaporizers to the circuit we will divide low pressure zone into series of episodes to cover all let's begin with the flow meters then on the left side you can see the mechanically pneumatically powered flow meter on the right side is the electronic digital flow meter more common in newer machines the flow meter assembly has two components the first component is invisible the flow meter valve and the second component is the flow meter or rotameter so let's see the flow meter valve first located inside the machine or i'd say right behind the knobs so in last episode we said that the secondary pressure regulators in intermediate pressure zone further reduce the pressure from 45 psig to 15 to 30 psig right click the link on top right corner to study intermediate zone this 30 psig pressure of gas reaches the flow meter valve inlet so the flow meter valve is essentially a point at which intermediate zone ends and the low pressure green zone begins the components of flow meter valve include the knob which controls the valve position respective to the valve seat right now if we turn the knob counterclockwise the valve moves away from the seat thus opening the orifice for gas to enter clockwise rotation of the knob results in valve closure and blocking any inlet gas from entering now the second component of flow meter assembly is the rotameter or constant pressure variable orifice flow meter what do you mean by constant pressure and variable orifice? Let's rotate the knob counterclockwise and open the flow of oxygen. Now you can see the flow hanging in the space perfectly in equilibrium at 1 liter per minute flow. So what's keeping this float hanging midair? The balance between two forces. The flow is moving the float upwards while the gravity is pulling it downwards. So the float hangs wherever the two opposing forces balance each other out right now if i increase the flow of oxygen the float will move upwards assuming a new position but it will again maintain its equilibrium where the two forces balance each other out so you see the pressure drop against the float or across the float has remained constant only the position of float has now changed in the tube depending upon the force exerted by set flow rate against gravity Hence, it is called constant pressure. Now, let's see why it's called variable orifice. The calibrated tubes that you see in which the float is hanging are called top tubes. Now, these tubes are tapered such that their diameter gradually increases as we move upwards. So, the tube's radius below is small and the radius or diameter above is large. Let's see the position of float at lower part and upper part of the top tube. So looking at the red colored float from above, the black colored lining around the float is the tube fault. It is larger above, right? So the flow of gas moves around the float bobbin and out into the machine. Now if you see it now, you'd realize that the orifice around the float is very small for gas flow at lower end of the top tube. And the orifice increases in the upper part, represented here in green area around the float. So since area of orifice in upper part is large, so less resistance and more flow can pass in upper parts, right? Since the orifice changes as we move up, it's called variable orifice. So now we know why they are called constant pressure variable orifice flow meters. At low flows in the lower part of tube, the flow essentially behaves in tubular order. So the laminar flow is there. Now in physics, we know Reynolds number dictates between laminar and turbulent flow. The equation is velocity into density into diameter divided by viscosity. As the diameter of the tube increases, flow increases meaning velocity and diameter both increase meaning higher Reynolds number. When this Reynolds number is higher than 1500 to 2000, the flow becomes turbulent. So the flow is turbulent in the upper part of the top tube. Now one last thing regarding this equation, the density and viscosity. If you recall the equations of laminar and turbulent flow, laminar flow is related to viscosity while the turbulent flow is related to the density of the gas. Since both these variables are different for different gases, so the top tubes that you see in the flow meters, they are calibrated and specified for each gas differently. The float 
may be skirted as on the left or it may be ball bobbin as on the right. For the ball type, you measure the flow taking the center of the ball as landmark. For the skirted type, the upper part of the float is taken as reference point. On top of the thop tubes, you can see these small stoppers. They prevent the float from blocking the outlets for gas. Another refinement has come in precision flows that the thop tubes aligned in series for specified gases. Now opening the oxygen flow, it first travels through the thinner low flow tube, then in series moves through the bigger one. In electronic type flow meters, the flow sensors are electronic too, such as vanes, anemometer or mass flow sensor. Let's see how mass flow sensor works. Now it has an inlet, a heating chamber powered by electric wire and an outlet. When flow enters the heating chamber, the chamber keeps the temperature of the gas constant. Now if you increase the flow, the chamber would require higher electricity voltage to keep the gas temperature constant. This change in electricity requirement helps it sense the total flow passing through the chamber. However, since these sensors are power dependent, the machine has a mechanical backup as well in case of power failure. Now coming to the safety features of flow meters. Number one, the knobs. Each gas knob has different physical properties. Oxygen knob is characteristically longer, fluted, and its grip is different so that you don't make a mistake while opening wrong gas, right? Next, these knobs are color coded white for oxygen, black and white for air, blue for nitrous as per the standard color codings. Thirdly, these knobs have shields that prevent them from moving inadvertently. Now the second safety feature is the position of oxygen downstream of other gases. Why? Let's see. Let's draw the map of it. So you can see on the machine nitrous oxide is at position 1, air at 2 and oxygen downstream at 3. The final mixture marked in orange big arrow at outlet, right? Now if there is any leak or breakage that occurs upstream of the oxygen inlet, then nitrous and air will move out of the leakage but oxygen will continue its normal path. So the final mixture will have less nitrous but oxygen content will not be affected, right? Now let's just interchange the nitrous and oxygen positions to get the concept of this. If nitrous is placed downstream, it will go out into the final mixture as intended, but oxygen will be wasted through the leak or breakage now. So the final mixture will be hypoxic and deadly for the patient. The final safety feature is my favorite one. It's very witty, very intelligent. The ORC or oxygen nitrous oxide ratio controller. Now you can see on this dragger machine, it is written SORC, meaning sensitive oxygen ratio controller. The ORC in any machine ensures the final gas output should have at least 25% oxygen fraction. It ensures that this mixture of oxygen and nitrous at minimum 3 ratio 1. In simple terms, 25% of the mixture should be oxygen at all cost. So how does it do it? Let's see how SORC of Draeger has done it. So the oxygen and nitrous lines are interconnected through a diaphragm and shaft. Both lines at the end have flow resistors. So when you open the oxygen flow, oxygen travels through the lines on reaching the resistors, the flow of oxygen encounters resistance. Now this resistance creates a back pressure by oxygen molecules, which moves the shaft towards right. This makes the nitrous proportioning valve to move rightwards too, and the orifice gets open and nitrous can flow. Just like oxygen, the nitrous flow also encounters resistance at resistor points and the back pressure would then shift the shaft leftwards, right? So the nitrous proportioning valve moves left and starts to close the nitrous flow orifice. So nitrous flow self controls its own flow as well. The net target being 3 ratio 1 total mixture, right? So here I open the oxygen flow and let's open nitrous flow. I'll bring oxygen flow to 1 liter per minute and see how much nitrous oxide can I open to the maximum. I'm increasing the nitrous flow now. So it has stopped at 3 liters per minute. It is not increasing beyond this point. So the SORC is ensuring that for 1 liter per minute oxygen, nitrous oxide shouldn't be increased to more than 3 liters per minute. Let's see on a digital flow meter of this mind ray machine. I set the oxygen flow at 0.3 liters per minute. 
Now increasing the nitrous oxide, it shouldn't increase beyond 0.9 liters per minute to ensure 3 ratio 1, right? So after 0.9 mark on further increasing nitrous, the machine automatically also increases the oxygen flow to ensure safe ratio. So increasing nitrous to 3 liters per minute, the machine automatically has increased the oxygen to 1 liters per minute. So the SORC of Dragger stopped nitrous from increasing further. But the ORC of this mind ray machine instead lets us increase the nitrous but also automatically increases the oxygen. Overall, the key being ORC maintains this ratio at 3 ratio 1, minimum. If there is no oxygen flow through the line, the interconnecting shaft is at maximum left position. So the proportioning valve has fully sealed the nitrous oxide line too. So even if I try to rotate the nitrous, nitrous flow will not be generated because the orifice is fully shut. The question arises, at what point does the nitrous proportioning valve completely close? So the answer to this is less than 200 ml per minute of oxygen flow. So here you see oxygen is fully closed. Now if I am rotating the knob of nitrous, the nitrous flow is not being generated, right? So this was the ORC. This is all about flow meters. Coming up next, we discuss vaporizers, the TEC4, the TEC5, and touch on the key points of vaporizer functions. Take care.